racing. You wanted the best. You got him for a rest. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of Outlaw. I racing. You wanted the best. You got him for a rest. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of Outlaws. Alright, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Ultimate Dirt TV. Tonight, the WP Concreting and the Dirt New Zealand bring you the midgets for round number 9 here live from the Eldora Speedway. As the driver's briefing is underway at the moment, so we'll have uh, heat races up very shortly on the program. We'll have three heat races here this evening, 10 laps for each heat. And after the three heroes, we'll have a pole shuffle. There'll be no B main tonight, I don't think, here. If there is, it'll be to line up positions only. And then we'll get set into the main event tonight. Before we get started, we're going to play the New Zealand National Anthem. So... All right, welcome back to Ultimate Dirt TV. We're live here on Facebook here. So if you haven't already, feel free to hit the like button on Facebook. Head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Ultimate Dirt TV as well. As we have uh, all of our broadcasts that we do, or we'll get uploaded to YouTube as well, so you can rewatch all the action on YouTube, or you can rewatch them live right here on Facebook, or rewatch them on Facebook uh, pretty much after we go off the air. So, heat number one 
not too far away from rolling out onto the racetrack and then we'll have the first of three heat uh, yeah first of three heat races here this evening each driver will have two heat races here this evening they'll have the it won't be a trophy dash i'm used to seeing a trophy dash it'll be a pole shuffle and then it'll be straight into the main event tomorrow night we're live on ultimate dirt tv for the new zealand title make sure you come back for that one and watch some of new zealand's best drivers go at it as they look to take home the new zealand one on their tail tank we have three divisions not all in one night over the following weeks I'm not sure which is first. I know we got the we got the 410 wing sprint cars, we got the 410 wingless sprint cars, and we've also got the mighty fine midgets as well. So it's going to be an entertaining couple of weeks to see who will take home the New Zealand championship. And it'll be all brought to you live here on Ultimate Dirt TV. So stick around. We are not too far away. From getting in to the racing here this evening, the drivers just having a bit of a a bit of a spoken to, a bit of a drivers briefing going on at the moment, and then it's just straight into heats here this evening. Looks like we've had a couple of late entries as well so i believe we're looking at around 24 drivers so if there's any more it looks like we will we will run a b main so just we'll go through all the drivers at the moment 61 of devon stone the 97 ben morrison the 14 of nathan clive 10 murray howe 019 brogan pickett norris the 32, Callan Arthur. 91, Jared Steen. 9, Jordan McDonnell. 56, Corey Tyler. 81, Sam Waddle. 077, Vince Romeo. 79, Ben McSweeney. 13, Alan Bishop. 15, Saul Smith. 77, James Halliburton. 68, Cameron Tanner. The 156, Reagan Tyler. Regan Tyler. The 11, Xavier Simmons. 39, Peter Honeywell. 71, David Sanford. The 42, Matt McCutcheon, 191, Mitchell Piskalik, 22, Caleb Beecroft, and 67, Brayton Davison, as the 24 of Harrison Martin. Harrison Martins has just joined as well. So we are set to have a, a B main here this evening. So now it's just all about trying to get the grids sorted and stuff like that so we'll take a quick break here on ultimate Dirt tv and we'll come back with heat number one not too far away from rolling out onto the racetrack i racing you wanted the best you got them for a breast often imitated never duplicated the greatest show on dirt the world of outlaws I grew up in Northern California. My parents were just really big race fans and took my sister and I to, you know, sprint car races pretty much every Friday and Saturday night. So I did outlaw kart racing from seven till I was 14. 
and then that's when I got into 360 and 410 wing sprint cars. There's just something about dirt racing that's just, you, you can't get anywhere else. I enjoy going back to race them whenever I can. I get to run you know, about 20 to 25 dirt races a year and try and you know, put on a show every time I'm there. Battle for the lead, Kyle Larson to the inside of Shane Stewart, slide job, no! Larson unable to complete the pass, he'll follow Shane Stewart down the back straightaway. Stewart makes the move to the inside of Craig Kinsler. Kyle Larson goes around the outside out of turn four. You've got a new race leader, Kyle Larson from Mike leads on lap number 23. I'm probably just a little more relaxed, I guess, at the dirt track just because it's more fun. Um, where the NASCAR stuff, you know, it's points racing and a lot bigger sponsors and stuff you have to please and all that. You're there for three days a week, so your approach is a little bit different there. Where sprint cars, you're you know, there for five or six hours and, and moving on to the next racetrack. So I've been on iRacing, I think, since 2009 or 10. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, starting out, I mean, as a rookie on there, you know, in the Legends and the late models and stuff like that. And that was fun to, you know, have to try and get your licenses up and stuff. But it's amazing to me how, now that I get to race on a lot of the tracks that are on there, how to the T, similar because of the laser scanning and stuff like that. So all the bumps and you know, all the visual aspects of it are very good. So when I first got to, like, k and and then the Nationwide Series at the time, uh, I would race iRacing all the time to you know, learn as much as I could about the racetrack before I went to the actual racetrack to race. So to me, it's just for fun now. So I, I enjoy going on there. Actually, I don't enjoy going on there all the time because I don't win a lot. So it's frustrating uh, to see uh, myself struggle to run top 10 in a Xfinity race or something like that and uh, get beat by Logan CV every time I run a sprint car. So the level of competition on iRacing is better than real life. I mean, you've got thousands of drivers on there that, you know, a lot of them are probably better than the people you see on TV. They just haven't had the, just the opportunities to make it, but uh, can kick butt on there. And, and you can spend all day long running thousands of laps a day so you can get yourself, you know, really good at it. So competition level is just unbelievable really on there. I mean, everybody's been asking for dirt on there for forever. So when they announced it, I got really, really excited. And honestly, it's, it's blown my expectations away. The cars, to me, drive really good when the track's hooked up. The visual part of the racetrack changing is, is amazing, how you can run some laps and see it start to get shiny, and then you feel it getting you know, slick. You know, areas of the racetrack getting dirty, and then you, know, you get some cars run through there, and it cleans off and gets gripped back. It's just, it's nuts. You know, the tear-off feature is really cool. You know, watching the wing move backwards and forwards. I run with the virtual reality headset too, so being able to like look down and see everything, it just, it looks extremely realistic. So yeah, it blew my expectations away. And it's only gonna get better, really. When I was 16 years old, I was working in a Goodyear tire store and my boss actually built an old dirt car, street stock Monte Carlo. Went with him one night, fell in love with it. It was a hell of a race, hell of a party, and a big fight afterwards. I was like, this is, this is it, this is it for me. 
it wasn't long after that I was driving an old 78 Camaro out of the weeds at, at that guy's farm. We pulled that thing out and made a race car out of it, and away we went. You know, I think a driver has more to do with the equation going back and racing dirt, whether it's a modified, a late model. You can do more with the race car. You know, the harder you drive it, a lot of times, the better it goes. You can crawl up on that wheel and feel like you made the difference at the end of the night. Asphalt car, you can't overdrive them. Well, that was the first thing that I had to learn right off the bat is, oh my gosh, I've got to discipline myself, not overdrive this thing, and that's how you get the most out of it. Truth be told, communicating the right information to your crew and, and your crew chief so they can do their job and make their appropriate adjustments for you to go faster and do your job is, is probably 90% of the game in, in our world. I've always loved late models. You know, my dream was to be a late model driver driving for a living across the country like Daryl and, and Don do. They drive for me. I mean, that was, truth be told, that was my dream, you know. I always wanted a semi. I always wanted a stacker trailer with two hot rods in it and let's go race and let's take off with your buddies and go race and, and chase that dream. Never in a million years did I think it would turn into a Cup Series and I actually have an opportunity to own two, um, you know, dirt late model teams. When you think of iRacing, you don't think of a video game. It's, it's not. It's a way above and beyond any of that. You know, dirt racing changes so much. The track changes so much. Being able to capture that, to, you know, experience all those details that surround dirt racing and make dirt racing what it is, is what makes iRacing so cool because they did nail all of that. I knew when they came to our shop and scanned cars and went to the detail of getting that car right, I knew that it was going to be over the top because it blew my mind just the work that went into making sure the car itself was legit. This sport has been around a long time. The competition can't be replaced and that's what brings people back to the racetrack week in and week out. Welcome back to Ultimate Dirt Media. We do apologize for the little bit of delay there. Nothing that we can do about it here. As we are getting set for our first heat race of the night. As you see the cars waiting to come out from Pit Road. It's going to be quite a few cars here in heat race. Number one, they'll be the same here in heat two as well as heat three. Each driver will get... Uh, towards the front, starting grid in their, well, one of their heat races, and then towards the back, or well, they'll have two middles. So it's all about giving every driver the opportunity to either a front row, or not a front row, towards the front starting position, and also towards the back as well. And see, so we go heat number one. Set to roll off onto the racetrack. So the 68, that's Cameron Tanner, will line up alongside the 14 of Nathan Clive. 077, Vince Romeo. He will line up out of position number three. Looks like we're going to have the 39 of Peter Honeywell line up out of position four. The 019, Brogan Pickett Norris. Uh, Brogan Pickett Norris will start out of position five. Then you go back to the 11 of. Xavier Simmons. Thirty-one 
32 of Callan Arthur there. 79 of Ben McSweeney. 77 of James Halliburton there on the outside. So here we go. First heat race of the night. 10 laps on the ball. We get set to go green off turn number four right now. It'll be the 68 of Cameron Tanner who leads the field to the drop of the flag stand here at Eldora Speedway. Honeybell sliding up through the middle of the racetrack towards the top and he's going to look to have second spot in the turn number three and four. Tanner, your race leader. Meanwhile, there's contact in the back of the bus. I think that was the 32 of Callan Arthur. But the opening lap in the books belongs to the 68 of Cameron Tanner. Now he gets all out of shape in turns one and two and he's all over the racetrack coming out of turn two and down the back straight away. Let's keep it on the 77. That's James Halliburton. But Peter Honeywell, your race leader, three wide off a of turn number four down towards the start finish line. And the 14 of Nathan Clyde working to the outside. Keep an eye on that 77 of James Halliburton. He gets shuffled back just a few more spots there. The 11 of Xavier Simmons trying to work to the inside. And the three wide off a of turn number four once again. So there's contact now between Halliburton and I believe that's the 11 of Xavier Simmons. 67 of Brayden Davison trying to make his way towards the front of the field. So Davison trying to pick up a couple of positions here in heat race number one. 10 laps on the board and Peter, uh, Peter Honeybell is currently your race leader. Five down, five to go. Vince Romeo battling here with the 14 of Nathan Clive. And old Nathan Clive and Romeo come together. Now here comes the 32 of Callan Arthur working to the low side. Looking to slide up to the top of the racetrack. He does so. He picks up position number three. And we got four to go. And here comes the 67 of Brayden Davison looking to pick up three slide jumps. And oh, well, the right rear from Brayden Davison sends Vince Romeo up and over. So the big slider doesn't work from Davison. Arthur into second. Honeybell, your race leader and looking in control of this one. There's Romeo still upside down. It's been a whole lap, man. The 14 of Nathan Clive right in third position. Your early race leader, Cameron Tanner, back there in fifth as we got two to run. That's Brayton Davis, and now it is, I believe that's McSweeney in the 79, trying to get past uh, Alan Bishop in that 13 machine. As the white flag is displayed on the racetrack. I know that's the checkered flag, in fact. The race is done for. The checkered flags are out, the 39 of. Peter Honeybell comes home with the win. Second will go to the 32 of Callan Arthur. Third is going to be the 14 of Nathan Clive. Then we go back to Cameron Tanner, Brayton Davison, Ben McSweeney, Alan Bishop, James Halliburton, 22 Caleb Beecroft, David Sanford in the 71, in the 42 Matt McCutcheon, the 019, Brogan Pickett Norris, the 15 of Saul Smith and Xavier Simmons and Vince Romeo was a DNF in that one. So hit number one in the books. So well done to Peter Honeybell on that win there. Hit number two, not too far away. Hit number two. We'll be off in about a minute or two, so we'll throw up a quick ad commercial ad and we'll be back here in just a moment's time.
So welcome back everyone to Ultimate Dirt TV. You're watching the WP Concreting the Dirt New Zealand Midget Series round number nine, live from the Eldora Speedway. As we head into the final month of this series, 12 week series. I need to make sure all the sound levels and audio levels are doing a okay. You can hear the sounds of the car properly. You can let us know in chat. So we'll take a look at our SETI Group Holdings starting grid here for heat race number two. Big thanks to SETI Group Holdings. Coming on board with Ultimate, DT, uh, Ultimate Dirt TV for the remainder of this season and also all of next season. Along with Colby's Eye Paints, they'll bring you the instant replays. Should be able to go back and have a look at some of the replays. So big thanks to Colby's Eye Paints. Check out also WP Concreting on Facebook along with The Dirt New Zealand. Give them a thumbs up and just show you support. And show your appreciation to the people that help support Ultimate Dirt TV as well. So it looks like the line of Jordan McDonnell will start on pole. Here in heat race number two to his outside, the 13 of Alan Bishop. The 81 of Sam Waddell. 32 of Callan Arthur. And you go back to the 91 of Jared Steen. Brogan Pickett Norris in the 019. You go back to the 10 of Murray Howe. Alongside Vince Romeo, the 61. Devin Stone, he lines up alongside the 68 of Cameron Tanner. The 24, Harrison Martins. And we got the 71 of David Sanford. The 191, Mitchell Piskalik. And the 67 of Brayton Davison. Brayton Davison in car 67. So this will be heat race number two. So you might, uh, might ask why these drivers who we've just seen in heat race number one are coming out to be in their second heat. Well, it's quite simple. Each driver has two heats. And you won't see them in the third one. So you'll see drivers from this one. Some of these drivers be in heat race number three. Whereas some of the other drivers won't be. So it'll all, all be about... Each driver getting two heats. So 10 laps on the board here for the Dirt New Zealand and WP Concreting Midget Series. Live here on Ultimate Dirt TV, heat race number two. Rolling through turns three and four. It'll be Jordan McDonnell in car number nine as he gets on the gas. And he leads by almost a half a straightaway going into turn number one and two. Couple of blinkers in this field. Callan Arthur, he's on the outside. Three wide on Bishop. Oh, there's contact there. Vince Romeo getting caught up again. Up the opening lap in the books. As we watch McDonnell out of turn number two. And look at the flight of midgets right now. The 81 here on the inside of the 32, Callan Arthur. Callan Arthur holding on to second. The 81, that's Sam Waddle. The 91, Jared Steen now working on the low side of the racetrack. And here comes Devin Stone in the black and yellow 61. Brayton Davison from the rear of the field as well. In that 67, we've seen him feed a right rear to someone. I think it was Vince Romeo in turns one and two. In heat number one. As Davison works to the outside of Devon Stone. Looking to pick up another position here. Now he's going to dive to the inside. And he's going to pick up one. And Well, that one's to no fault. The Braytons and the 81 was coming down the racetrack. But Brayton Davison ends up upside down. But back on all fours. So now you're watching the 71 on screen. That's David Sanford. David Sanford in car number 71. Oh, there's a contact here. Murray Howe. And there's Piskalik coming through as well. Just under a handful of laps remaining here. For the nine of Jordan McDonnell. He's got a huge lead. 
over the 32 of Callan Arthur. Great battle going on for third and fourth. The 91 on the inside, that's Jared Steen. And the 61 on the outside, that's uh, Devon Stone. So a great battle here for third and fourth right now. But Stone has the momentum on the top side of the racetrack as we got, I think, one or two laps to go. So try and take a look at the nine of Jordan McDonnell. Uh, so he's not slowing down anytime soon. So it looks like the white flag is upon us right now. And through turns three and four for the for his first heat win of the night in car number nine. It should be McDonnell pulling up on the back straight away. But he's going to go around one more time. Just to make sure all the circumstances here. And there it is across the start finish line. I was just staying in the gas a little longer. I might have been I'm just calculating the number of laps here. There it is, second flag. So it's just a, a couple of laps ahead of myself there, but Jordan McDonnell in the nine. We'll have the drivers coming home in second here in just a moment. We can tell you that it's definitely not the 13 of Alan Bishop. It'll be Callan Arthur who gets home in second. Third is going to be the 61 of Devon Stone. Jared Steen in fourth. The 81 of Sam Waddell. Mitchell Piskalik in the 191. And you go back to Brayton Davison in the 67. Vince Romeo in the 077. David Sanford in the 71. Harrison Martins in the 24. Murray Howe in the 10, and then Alan Bishop and Brogan Pickett Norris and Caleb. I'm not sure if Big Guy Caleb was in that one, but Jordan McTennell comes away with the win here in heat number two. Still one more heat race left to come up here on Ultimate Dirt TV before we roll off into the sunset. We have the pole shuffle, it'll be top six. Whether we have a B main or not, or whether there's going to be, looks like we got two or three drivers that are joining the server, but not here at the moment. So it looks like they've disconnected. So we might just have a 22 car field for the main event here uh, this evening. believe it'll be 35 or 30 laps in distance maybe so once again we'll take a quick ad break here on ultimate dirt tv and come back with our third and final heat race of the nights Introducing a whole new form of racing to the best online racing simulation in the world. This is Dirt Racing on iRacing.com. Race online at some of America's most legendary dirt tracks, including Eldora and Williams Grove. iRacing is the premier online racing game featuring NASCAR, IndyCar, sports cars, and now World of Outlaws, the leading sanctioning body for dirt racing iRacing is easy to use and features a centralized ranking system to make sure you have the best experience at any skill level. With a massive inventory of high precision laser scan tracks and cars with an unmatched dedication to quality and detail, iRacing gives you the most authentic online racing experience available. Thanks to iRacing's dynamic track system developed specifically for dirt racing, tracks change over the course of a race, just like your favorite dirt track on a Friday or Saturday night. From a slick racing group all the way up to the cushion, iRacing's dirt tracks deliver nonstop racing action. 
Partnered with the World of Outlaws, iRacing is your source for the most authentic dirt racing experience available, featuring four brand new tracks and 11 new cars, including street stocks, legends cars, late models, NASCAR trucks, winged and non-winged sprint cars, with much more on the way. Join the dirt revolution on iRacing.com and start slinging mud today. So third and final heat race about to roll back out onto the racetrack here, live on Ultimate Dirt TV, live from the Eldora Speedway for the WP Concreting and the Dirt New Zealand Midget Series, round number nine. So we're heading to the final third of the season, or of the championship, I should say. So we're here at Eldora Speedway, Rossburg, Ohio. Big half mile track, it's wide, it's, well, a lot of room for some big sliders here for this evening, hopefully. As we are setting the grid for the final time in a heat racing competition. Remember, tomorrow night, we're live here on Ultimate Dirt TV for the New Zealand Championships over the next coming couple of weeks we'll have the 410 wing sprint cars the 410 wingless sprint cars and the midgets it'll be New Zealand's best going up against each other in the New Zealand title who will take out the crown jewel of New Zealand racing once again it'll be live here on Ultimate Dirt TV Once again, make sure you check out the social media pages for everyone that makes it all possible for Ultimate Dirt TV to bring you the action. Obviously, we want to thank SETI Group Holdings. You can visit them on the web at www.SETI.com. It's C-E-D-I. You can check out Colby's Eye Paints on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash Colby's Eye Paints. You can check out WP Concreting on Facebook as well. Type in WP Concreting. Check out the Dirt New Zealand as well. Give them all a like, give them all a follow, and just uh, show you support that you know, makes everyone happy here. Make sure you check out Ultimate Dirt TV on YouTube as well. Go to youtube.com forward slash Ultimate Dirt TV. As the final heat race of the night is now upon us. Looks like the 15 of Saul Smith. We'll start on the front row. Alongside him in car number 61, Devon Stove. Devon Stove in 61. I do apologize. I've been calling him Devon Stone. The 77 of James Halliburton alongside Murray Howe. Ben McSweeney alongside Jared Steen in the 91, I believe that is. Heat number three is green and we are underway here. And it's the 15 of Saul Smith. Leading us into turn number one and two and Stove around the outside just catches the tail tank there. As here comes McSweeney on the inside and there's Murray Howell on the outside into turn number three and four. McSweeney in the 79 and Murray Howell in that number 10 machine. But Stove to lead the opening lap here in heat race number three competition. Howe not on the cushion just yet. McSweeney is as he gets a rocket ship of a run. Coming off turn number four. Two laps in the books here. For heat race number two. We're going to keep an eye on that battle for a second at the moment. Because McSweeney he is going to be all over the rear crash bar. And the rear tail tank of that number ten machine. As how he's holding him off at the moment. Now the battle... Here comes McCutcheon on the inside. He does a big slide jump, so we'll keep an eye on that 42 as well as he's now going to make a way and make a run towards the front of the field here in heat race competition action as we got four down. Mm. 
Simmons now puts a slider on McSweeney around the outside of Murray Howe, as is Matt McCutcheon. Now McCutcheon going to use a big slide job going into turn number three and four, but McSweeney too good with a crossover. They come down into turn number one and two. McCutcheon once again. Saul Smith now. He spun around along with another car in turns one and two. And McCutcheon going to block that slider there from McSweeney. He shut the door going into turn number three. As he now tries to come after your race leader. And that's Devon Sove in car number 61 out in front. Should have three laps remaining here on heat race number three. Oh, Stove just gets a bit out of shape on the entry to turn number one and two. Now that's going to allow Matt McCutcheon to really close the gap. In. And here it comes in the 42 in the Speed Nation. There it is. Big slide job from McCutcheon. But Stove back to his inside. And that's a side-by-side -side battle for the race lead. Now Stove, he's going to throw a big slider of his own, McCutcheon. Can he use the momentum from the top side as he drives it down to the bottom? As McCutcheon with a slide up and stove with a nice cross back underneath. Off at turn number four. Nine laps in here in heat race number three. Big slider there from McCutcheon on stove. Side by side off at turn number two. Down the back straight away. McCutcheon rolls the cushion through turns three and four. Stove keeping a lock down on the low side. McCutcheon. Into turn number one and two. He has got this one pretty much sewn right up in the bag. Looks like these are 12 lap heat races here this evening. McCutcheon continuing to lead us. No, there we go. Checkered flag is out and McCutcheon will get the job done here in heat race number three. Devin Stove will come home in second. Third is going to be Ben McSweeney. Fourth is going to be Xavier Simmons. Fifth is going to be James Halliburton. So Piskalik not happy there with the 11 of Simmons. Steen in the 91. You go back to Jordan McDonnell. The 10 of Murray Howe. 24 of Harrison Martins. The 81 of Sam Waddle. Nathan Clive. Peter Honeybill. Mitchell Piskalik. And the 15 of Saul Smith. At the back of this one. So heat number three completed. And the 42 of Matt McCutcheon comes away with the win here in heat race number three. So who will take out round number nine of the series? We're not too far away from finding that one out. We've still got a pole shuffle still to come here. And then we'll have the main event after that one. So stick around here on Ultimate Dirt TV. We'll be back. In just a few short moments, we're going to wait for race control and admins and all the officials to tally up the points here to, to determine who will be in tonight's poll shuffle. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, 
ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Introducing a whole new form of racing to the best online racing simulation in the world. This is Dirt Racing on iRacing.com. Race online at some of America's most legendary dirt tracks, including Eldora and Williams Grove. iRacing is the premier online racing game featuring NASCAR, IndyCar, sports cars, and now World of Outlaws, the leading sanctioning body for dirt racing iRacing is easy to use and features a centralized ranking system to make sure you have the best experience at any skill level. With a massive inventory of high precision laser scan tracks and cars with an unmatched dedication to quality and detail, iRacing gives you the most authentic online racing experience available. Thanks to iRacing's dynamic track system developed specifically for dirt racing, tracks change over the course of a race, just like your favorite dirt track on a Friday or Saturday night. From a slick racing group all the way up to the cushion, iRacing's dirt tracks deliver non-stop racing action. Partnered with the World of Outlaws, iRacing is your source for the most authentic dirt racing experience available, featuring four brand new tracks and 11 new cars, including street stocks, Legends cars, late models, NASCAR trucks, winged and non-winged sprint cars, with much more on the way. Join the dirt revolution on iRacing.com and start slinging mud today. Racing, you wanted the best, you got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the World of Outlaws.
All right, we are back here on Ultimate Dirt TV for round number nine of the Dirt New Zealand and WP Concreting Midget Series live from Eldora Speedway. Sorry, just turn the heater off here. So we are getting set, we've just been told. We are going to be having a B main here this evening. We're just trying to find out how many laps it will be, how many transfer into the main event, whether all drivers will transfer, and whether this is just for starting positions only we'll find out here in just a few short moments time so don't go anywhere as it looks like we're gonna have that was the heat so we're just trying to find out whether the B main grid is gonna be posted somewhere whether we're just gonna have to so wing it. This is getting fairly hot here on a cold night here. All right, here we go. B main time, and let's have a look at some of the drivers in this one. This looks like we're going to have the 13 of Alan Bishop alongside the 11 of Xavier Simmons. Then we're going to have David Sanford alongside him, Mitchell Piskalik, Murray Howe, Vince Romeo, the 22, Caleb Beecroft, the 015. 019 of a Brogan Pickett Brogan Pick Norris. I apologize there. But here we go. B main is underway here in this one. The little driver is coming out of turn number four, and it is Alan Bishop who is out in front leading this one. 71 of David Sanford working on the outside of the racetrack. Mitchell Piskalik goes upside down, getting back on all fours, and in comes Caleb Beecroft to his inside. Vince Romeo looking to survive this one. Now trying to battle on the inside of the 24. That's Harrison Martins in cut number 24. But battle on for the race lead between Bishop and Sanford. Sanford looking to go around the outside. Bishop blinking his way to the top of the racetrack. Uh, so that would be very hard to pass a car that has got that kind of internet. So you can see why David Sanford has just backed off a little bit there. As Sanford works to the top side of the racetrack. Harrison Martin's holding off Vince Romeo. For positions three, Xavier Simmons in the 11. Mitchell Piskalik in the 191. Then Caleb Beecroft. And you go back to the 15 of Saul Smith, Brogan, Pickett, Norris. And then back to our front two cars, our front runners. Alan Bishop in car number 13. And the 71 of David Sanford on the inside. So unfortunately, we're not going to find out... How many of the laps it is? I, generally, we don't normally run a B main, so nice to see a lot of these drivers have come out in support of the series, especially in the ninth round. In you would have thought that some people generally tend to get a bit frustrated, and but it's great to see a great car count here this evening and supporting the Dirt New Zealand and also supporting WP Concreting. Those guys do a phenomenal job putting these shows on week in and week out. As Bishop, well, he was solid there for quite some time, but Blinking was just back for just a moment, for a brief moment it was, and now for that brief moment, the 71 of David Sanford gets around the outside. Now Harrison Martin's in the 24, looking to do the same. In fact, goes for the slider in the turn number one and two. It completes the pass. As Sanford 
Top spot. Top spot on is on the racetrack. And Mans trying to take that away from him right now. They come past the start finish line. Here comes Mans to the inside. In the turn number one and two, there's a slider. And now Sanford racing for the race lead down into turn number three. Side by side, Mons, he's got the momentum on the top side, hits the cushion. But here comes Sanford back to the inside. Oh, Mons hangs on to that one. What a great race we had just for a moment for the top spot. And now here comes Piskalik looking to take over third. And now he's going to look to throw a slider. On Bishop, and Bishop tries around the outside. Martin's holding the top honors right now here in the B main. Second is Sanford, Bishop, third, and Piskalik back there in fourth position. Piskalik with a big slide jump and the big dive bomb. Into turn number one, uh, into three and four. I apologize there. That's surely we're not too far away from throwing the checkers here in tonight's B main. Martin's in the 24. He's looking solid and racy in this B main tonight. He's not pulling away from the 24 all that much as the 24. Sorry, the 71 of David Sanford. Apologies, the 24 pulling away from the 71. So 71 was trying to reel in Harrison Martins for the top spot, but the checkered flag has just been displayed here on the racetrack. And there we go, Harrison Martins picking up the win here in the B main as we look to find out how many transfer in. So second will be the 71, David Sanford after the 24. Harrison Martins picking up the win. The 191, Mitchell Piskalik comes home in third, fourth. He's going to be the 13. Alan Bishop, Vince Romeo comes home in fifth. Sixth will be Caleb Beecroft. Seventh will be Brogan Pickett Norris. And Saul Smith, our eight car finishes here in the B main tonight. So well done to our drivers. This is Harrison Martins in the 24. Takes the top on it. Now remember, once again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Tomorrow night we're live on Ultimate Dirt TV for the New Zealand title. One of three New Zealand titles to be tested uh, to be contested over the next coming weeks. We got the 410 wing sprint cars. We got the 410 wingless sprint cars, and also we got these mighty fine midgets. As it is going to be set to be an absolute barn burner of a title not only for the midgets but also the wingless sprint cars and also the wing sprint cars as well who will take home the top honors well we'll worry about that tomorrow night but we're going to worry about who will take out round number nine of the wp concreting and the dirt new zealand midget series from Eldor. We've still got a pole shuffle up next and then we'll have our main event straight after that one so we're not too far away from getting to the fun part of the all races of fun here with these midgets and, and also WP Concreting and the Dirt New Zealand as we're live here on Ultimate Dirt TV. Make sure you check us out on YouTube as well. Go to youtube.com forward slash Ultimate Dirt TV Check us out on Make sure you like and follow us on Facebook, along with WP Concreting and the Dirt New Zealand. Check out Colby's Eye Paints on Facebook as well. Check out SETI Group Holdings on the web, www.SETI.com. That's C-E-D-I dot com. We'll take one more quick commercial break. And then it'll be straight into the pole shuffle here this evening.
racing. You wanted the best. You got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. I grew up in Northern California, and my parents were just really big. Well, it looks like we're back here for the pole shuffle. We got Brayton Davison and Peter Honeybell here for the first of five pole shuffles here. That's Brayton Davison on the outside in the black and white 67. Peter Honeybell. In the black 39 on the inside, two laps, the winner will advance. There we go, green flag is out here in the first pole shuffle of the evening. Honeywell slides up, Davison crosses back underneath him. Davison too good on the exit of turn number two. And now Honeywell going to slide up one more time. Davison with a nice crossover. Lap one in the books belongs to Brayton Davison. As Honeywell once again going to throw the big slide job at Davison. So smart already on the bottom side. He's now going to keep it on the low side in turns three and four. Going to give Honeywell one last chance to cross around the outside. But no. Brayton Davison will hang on for the win here in this one. So well done to him and now you gotta wonder what these guys choose to run for fuel whether they go three or i think it's three or 13 gallons or 12 gallons one of the two i really run these midgets all that often so you can see davison stopped on the middle of turns one and two as now out comes little mac Chicken arms, chicken legs, mini mac. So this will be for positions five. Loser will start out of five. Winner will guarantee themselves a fourth starting position. Hopefully they're green off this corner right now. Yeah, looks like they're going to roll around one more time. So you see Davidson just rolling, getting those right side tyres on the cushion on the outside of turns one and two. Just trying to find out where he can put that race car, because no doubt, I guarantee Mini Max going for a slider into turn number one and two. I'd almost bet my last dollar on it. McCutcheon on the inside in the black and pink machine. We're out of turn number four and the green flag is out and Davison to the outside. And well, I would have won the bet because now Mini Mac, he's got the run on the outside, but Davison back to the inside. Now, this is a battle that I want to see because these two drivers know how to get around this racetrack. And here we go, side by side. Davison has the momentum off turn number four. Now, Mini Mac. Oh. Oh, no, McCutcheon around. 
upside down Davison gets out of the gas knowing that uh, he's already got this one wrapped up in the book so he just needs to just settle down right now so Matt McCutcheon will start out of position five Davison will advance at least from row three up to a minimal of row two starting position that rolls the dirt division number 91 of Jared Steen. It's going to be thanks to Ultimate Dirt TV sponsors, Colby's Eye Paints and SETI Group Holdings. Big thanks to the Dirt New Zealand and also WP Concreting for allowing Ultimate Dirt TV to cover the action over the past nine weeks. After this, we'll have weeks 10, 11 and 12 coming up. So they should pace around one more time. Nope. In fact, they're only this time by. So, Steen on the inside, Davison on the outside. And if it's one thing to give a guy that's already warmed up on the cushion, you don't give him the top side of the racetrack. Because that is just asking to be beaten right now. And look at the 67. He rails that cushion. And he is just gone. The only thing that's going to stop him is fuel right now whether he's got three gallons in and Davison will advance Steen he will start position number four in tonight's main event so you see Davison stopped in the middle of turns number one and two there So that rolls the 79 of Ben McSweeney. Winner advances to the front row. Loser starts out of P3. Almost at this stage, you'd almost have your money on Davison. But McSweeney, he's a fast cat. He knows how to get around this place. In a vision, a slider coming from Davison with a nice crossover from McSweeney side by side. Down the back straight away. Davison going to shut the door going into turn number three and four. Davison gets the right rear on the cushion and it's McSweeney through the middle of the racetrack. He just looks like he's just out of groove right now, out of contention. As he tries to reel in your leader of Brayton Davison. But no, McSweeney will f start in position three. And Davison will start... At least on the front row, nice little donuts there from McSweeney. And it's going to be inter interested to see who comes out highest point score. It's the nine of Jordan McDonnell. So this is where fuel becoming a factor right now because Davison might have, I think it's 12 or 13 gallons. It's one of the two. Whereas McDonnell, you know, he can come out on three gallons and, you know, um, weight factor comes into into effect here but Davison this is for the front row who will start on pole this for the pole position green flag is out and we're underway Davison with a slide on McDonnell McDonnell crosses back underneath but as Davison has done all night in the pole shuffle looking to go from the third starting row to the front position I would say front row but this is what he's racing for Davison leads the opening lap. McDonnell. Trying to reel him in on the cushion. He's got one last chance through turns three and four. Davison's going to hang on for the win. As he will start on pole for tonight's main event. Did I do that right? Have we seen four or five? No, in fact, I apologize. That was for positions number three. That one, uh, two. So this is for the front row, Devon Stove in car number 61, unless there is eight cars in the pole shuffle tonight. There's Davison. Well, he's making his way through the field. So Stove in the 60, 61, Davison in the 67, the black and yellow 
is Devon Stove. Green flag is out in the Never Left Motorsports number 67. Got a good jump to the top of the racetrack. Oh, he jumped. <laughs> you see a free rev of that car out of turn number two. As Davison, he came down the racetrack there and Stove had to get out of the gas. 12 going, thanks. No, I wasn't sure if it was 12 or 13. I don't race these cars. Stove now to the inside in turns three and four. One last chance to try and take the win away from Davison, but he can't do it. Stove comes home in second, and Brayton Davison. Oh, by the way, he's stopping on the racetrack. It looks like we're going to have one more car come out, maybe. And we do, we have the 32 of Callum Arthur. So it looks like it was an eight car pole shuffle. Generally only been having six cars, but hey, you just roll with what you, you roll with what's out on the racetrack. So in fact, you know what? We're gonna take a ride on board here with Brayton Davison. In fact, we're gonna go inside the cockpit of this 67 just to see what it's like to run two laps around this racetrack so they go around one more time drivers need to be side by side so now that I know that it's eight cars well I know he would have chucked 12 gallons in otherwise he wouldn't have made it this far so throughout the night Davison he's had the third fastest lap with a 16.931 we'll see what kind of lap times he can do here in the pole shuffle so a very even start here so we're on board with Brayton Davison and you see Morale the cushion now to the, in, uh, to the inside as there he goes. see what it's like to run two laps around Eldora in this one and there you have it Davison comes away with the win he will start on pole so he went from the back of the pole shuffle so from row four all the way to position number one and that's a fantastic drive from Brayton Davison in that 67 in fact we'll bring him up in have a quick chat with him well Brayton nice drive from a fourth row starting position in tonight's main event you go undefeated in the pole shuffle and you start on pole you got to be happy with how your car is feeling at the moment yeah it's really good thanks um I've only just been on back on the simulator for a couple of days now and just thought I'd get back inside after a little break during the real life season. So yeah, it's, it's feeling good at the moment. Um, the, the track's really cool at the moment, so I think it's going to be a good feature and put on some good racing. All right, well, speaking of the feature, we'll uh, let you get back to it. Now you've got, uh, I think, 30 laps here on tap for tonight, so good luck for the feature, and hopefully we get to talk to you in victory lane after this one. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks, Brett. There we have a Brayton Davison in the 67. And see, we'll start this one on a pole. Well, we're not too far away from rolling into the main event here this evening for round number nine of the WP Concreting in the Dirt New Zealand Midget Series from Eldora Speedway. The B Mains, the Heat Races, the Pole Shuffle. It's provided some great racing so far. Hopefully, we get to see some of that 
in the main event here to come. I believe it is going to be 30 laps on tap for the program here in a moment. And in fact, we're just going to go and check a few things just to make sure that it is 30 laps in distance. So we'll take a quick break here on Ultimate Dirt to be hopefully the last break of the night before the main event will start to roll onto the racetrack. So it is 35 laps. And then we'll have five laps. The first five laps after the pace truck has taken to pit road after they get the initial green flag. Then we'll get set into five pace laps to get these drivers lined up in their correct positions once they're lined up into their correct, uh, correct position. Once they've completed the five formation laps, it will be 35 laps in distance. So we'll take a look at our City Group Holdings starting grid in just a moment. So we'll just wait for the cars to get on pit road and you'll see lap one with 41 to go up the top. It is a 40 lap scheduled race server. As I said, the first five laps will be under yellow flag conditions. Well, not under yellow flag, it'll be under pacing laps. So this will give all the drivers the chance to get into their correct positions. And then we'll get set to roll off for our 35 lap main event. You can see the fireworks going off in the background. So you're watching round number nine of the WP Concreting in the Dirt New Zealand Midget Series live from Eldora Speedway right here on Ultimate Dirt TV. We're, all, we're only on Facebook tonight. You can check out our YouTube channel as well, go to youtube.com forward slash ultimate uh, TV. As this is set to be an absolute beauty with the track being ripe, pristine. It is just an absolute all out slugfest here this evening. As we get set for the main event. Ding, ding, ding. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To the main event. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh yeah, it is time. Brayton Davison and Callan Arthur. They will start positions one and two. Devin Stone alongside Jordan McDonnell. Ben McSweeney alongside Jared Steen. Matt McCutcheon and Peter Honeybell. Row five, the 77 of James Halliburton alongside Nathan Clive. Sam Waddle alongside Cameron Tanner. Harrison Munns. He lines up alongside David Sanford, Mitchell Pisklick, and Alan Bishop, Caleb Beecroft, and Brogan Pickett Norris, Saul Smith, and Xavier Simmons. Our 20 cars in tonight's main event. 35 laps on tap. And Brayton Davison is certainly one of the favourites after coming from that fourth row. 
from the pole shuffle to position number one. We spoke to him earlier on, he said the track is in great shape. So they roll around a couple more times before we let the green flag fly here at El Bora Speedway. Essentially, you normally see these cars right up along the wall at both ends of the racetrack, whoever one and two. It's a lot closer to the wall than what turn three and four is. There is still a cushion to lean on. And two to green right now, ladies and gentlemen. From here on out, yellow flags, laps, they will count towards tonight's feature events. I think last week at Knoxville, we've seen a bunch of green flag laps, but we did see a bunch of yellows as well. So hopefully we don't see too many yellows here this evening. Hopefully we get to see the perfect flags for the right perfect race. A green, a white, and a checker. That's all we need to see. Here we go, it is time to get after it, ladies and gentlemen, round number nine of the Dirt New Zealand and WP Concreting Midget Series live from Eldora Speedway. We are about to rumble. Through turns three and four, Brayton Davison leads us to the green flag and we are underway here in the main event. Callan Arthur to the top side of the racetrack. They were four wide for a moment in turns one and two. Oh, McSweeney and Steen got together. Do they keep it going? There's some contact deep in the back of the field. Tanner around. Steen around. Yellow flag is out. Xavier Simmons caught up involved in that one. Sam Waddle upside down. And let's take a look at a Colby's eye paints instant replay. Let's we have a look at the contact. Keep an eye on the white 91 here. He just got into the back of McSweeney, come down the racetrack, got into Honeywell. And cars come up behind him. Piskalik got involved there. And unfortunately, the 91, it goes around. And that ends the 81 upside down as well. We'll have a look here at the 81. So there's contact again off the turn number two. See the contact happen in front of him. Caleb Beecroft just comes in from behind. And the 81 just not having a good start to this feature event. And the 81, the DC Solar. So we had a powered number 81 back on pit road as the caution flag is out. And the lights are off on the pace truck as we are set to go back to green flag racing with 31 laps to go. So yes, yellow flag, lap, yellow flag laps count towards the feature event tonight. So Davison will once again lead us to the flag stand green as flag, we are green, green flag. flag racing here at Old Bora. Here comes McCutcheon on the inside of Stove, looking for that slide job in one and two. No, McSweeney, oh, there was contact. McCutcheon with a 360, kept it going and keeps the green flag out. Nice one, McCutcheon. Three wide for a moment on the inside, and there is contact deep in the back of the pack. And the 11 of Xavier Simmons to take a look at a Colby's eye paint instant replay just to see what happened here. Oh, the 22 of Caleb Beecroft. So we'll have a look at what happened with Caleb Beecroft there. And the door got shut by the 14 of Nathan Clyde. And we're going to lose a couple of cars out of that one, so... Yeah, door just gets shut there. Caleb coming back up the racetrack. Not much you can do about that one. But Xavier Simmons and Bishop as well. In fact, Bishop in that TFH number 13. Upside down. He is 
done and dusted here in the main event. So the early couple of portions here this evening. So lights turning off on the I Racing official post truck right now. As we have 29 laps, 20 sorry, 27 laps. Right now it'll be 26 when we get back to green flag racing condition. We already see Jordan McDonnell up to position at number two. After starting on the outside of row two. Let's get a few laps in the books, boys. Let's try and provide some good racing. We've all got the New Zealand Ninja title flag, as flag. well. Night one of the title starts tomorrow night live on Ultimate Dirt TV. And Brayden Davison leads down the back straight away. He's got McDonnell right in behind him in that number nine. Work on the cushion through turns three and four. 32 of Callum Arthur. Oh, we got McSweeney around. All right, man. Caution is out. Caution is out. Let's take a look at our replay. Let's see what happened to the 79 of Ben McSweeney. Big thanks to Colby's Eye Paints for the replays here this evening. Just come down the racetrack. In fact, we just got into the 77. I believe that's Halliburton. It is, and it all just uh, piled up behind him there. So, so on board with. This one, so on board with Ben McSweeney. Unfortunately, just a drive error on that one, but look, we're all perfect. Let me tell you, I've driven into someone. He won't be the last, and he's certainly not the first one to do it. So the lights are still on the paint truck. So two to green. So 21 laps remain when we get this race back underway and. But never lift number 67 has found its way to the front of the field. Big thanks to Hazamedia as well for getting some stuff sorted on the overlay side of things and, and on, the, on the back end that you, know, you guys can't see. So big shout out to Hazamedia. You can check him out on Facebook as well as on the internet, hazamedia.com. You guys might know him. If you don't, you must be a, you might be living under a rock. So here we go: Brayton Davison, Jordan McDonnell, Callan Arthur. Your top three: Devon Stove, James Halliburton. Your top five: Matt McCutcheon, Harrison Mans, Mitchell Piskey, Nathan Clive, and Jared Steen. Our top ten. We're back underway, and here comes the slider from McDonnell. And oh, not the right rear caught the front nerf bar of that 67. And the 67 ain't going to take that one lightly. He's going to return serve immediately in turns three and four. And this is the battle we wanted to see. Going into turn number one and two. Davison shuts it on McDonnell. And this is a great race if these two drivers can trade sliders like that. Through turns three and four. Davison back to the front. McDonnell second. Arthur Stove. And here comes I mean, Matt McCutcheon. Yellow out. is out. And we've got the 39 of Peter Honeybell. We'll take a look at a Colby's Eye Paints instant replay just to see what happened to the 39. So you can get around the outside of Saul Smith in car 15 and just got tight, got the cushion, got upside down, coming back down the racetrack. And that'll be the yellow flag out, keeping it in reverse till it comes out. Let's go back a little bit further to watch this battle between your front runners. So we just missed the slider there from McDonnell and here's where Davison returned the favour and just look at how big that slider was. This is a replay brought to you by Colby's Eye Paints. 
Look at just how close this is. In fact, let's get on board here with the left front. So this is a replay once again. Next to Colby's eye face. Well, I'm going to say both these drivers are luckily not to be upside down. Lights are out, 15 remain here in the main event, so essentially 20 laps complete. That's Brayton Davison, your leader, McDonnell, Arthur, Stove and McCutcheon. Let's see if McCutcheon can make his way towards a podium spot here as the green flag is back out. And Surely McDonnell's not going to throw the slider into one and two. No, he doesn't, but I'll tell you who he does. McCutcheon does it on Stove in one and two. And now McCutcheon, he's going to look to come back after you. Your third place driver on the racetrack at the moment in car number 32. That's Callan Arthur. Right, is out. Is out. Oh, we've got Xavier Simmons going upside down as well. Let's take a look at a Colby's iPhone's instant replay. You now the 24 of Harrison Martins around running in position six we'll see what happens oh just jumps the cushion and gets hit there and we have a look at the 11 of xavier simmons in fact having contact there with mitchell piskalik in the 191 done well to avoid one he almost got sent into the fence there by the 77 who was trying to avoid that accident as well in turns three and four but not to be lights are out 11 to go so we'll have a word with our Top three after the race. If they're on Discord, they should all be on Discord. Can Davison hang on for his first win of the series? In fact, first time he's raced over the past nine weeks. And McDonnell. Green flag, green flag. As Callan Arthur should be having a black flag here for passing on the inside of the number nine. And well. Matt McCutcheon now with a slider in turns one and two and he goes from fourth to position number two and McCutcheon sets his sight on the 67. Well, Davison very lucky there not to go upside down. As McDonnell back there in third and you can see the distance out between first, second and third. They are spread out by seven tenths. McCutcheon weighs down his fastest lap of the race with a 17.208. Davison, he's in a 16.825, but McCutcheon, he was the fastest of these three. We got a car upside down. Right, caution is out. And caution, caution is, out. is out on the racetrack. And I dare say it might have been this car that was upside down on the front straight away. I believe it might have been the 019 of Brogan Pickett Norris. Let's take a look to see what happened here. Caleb Beecroft just gets on his inside and well, he goes upside down, just trying to stay out of harm's way. But the 22 of Caleb Beecroft there. Also the 15 of Saul Smith as well. Tell you what this does do this gives us uh, about five to go when we get the green flag in fact lights are out so they'll be off next time by so yes it'll be five to go and then it's going to be Davison McCutcheon McDonnell your top three 
and we're looking to put their best foot forward not only tonight but try and carry some momentum as we're heading to the New Zealand Championship, the New Zealand title here on Ultimate Dirt TV, night number one tomorrow night. McCutcheon, we know he's got the speed to get a win here. Can he pick it? Can he pick up and take this race away from Brayton Davison in green those last flag, five flag. laps? And here we go, we are back to green flag action here. And McCutcheon slows to the top side in turns number one and two. He's waiting for a run on Brayton Davison. And now he gets, to the, he gets to the wall. Davison as now here comes McCutcheon with a slide jump. And here is McDonnell. Well, he's looking to the outside, almost looks to the inside of Brayton Davison. But Matt McCutcheon to the front of the field. And Davison with a slide jump of his own. And McCutcheon going to keep it on the bottom out of turn number two. This is a great three car battle. And this is what you want to see. Oh, slider from McCutcheon. Davison back to the bottom side, off of turn number four, three to run, one and a half miles, and now here comes McDonnell and Davison with a slide jump, oh there's contact, McDonnell upside down, right, yellow, down. yellow, yellow, yellow on the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it, unless they decide to race this one out, as McCutcheon slows up, as does Brayton Davison, and oh my, let's take a look at the Colby's Eye Paints instant replay just to see what happened there between your top three. There was a the slider. This is where things got interesting. Both cars go to the low side for the slider. McCutcheon got into the back of Davison. And one more time. And just carrying a lot of momentum to the top of the racetrack, the nine of oh, Jordan McDonnell, unfortunately ending upside down. As this is going to conclude the racing here from the Eldora Speedway. Brayton Davison, car number 67. He will get the job done. Second is going to go to. Matt McCutcheon and Kellen Arthur well, Kellen Arthur is going to come home in third so we'll take a look at our city group holdings finishing results coming home in the win with the 67 of Brayton Davison coming home in second was the 42 of Matt McCutcheon third is Callan Arthur, Devon Stone in fourth, Devon Stone in fourth, Mitchell Piskalik in fifth, Jared Steen, six, Harrison Martin, seventh, Nathan Clive, eighth, James Halliburton, ninth, tenth was Saul Smith, Keller Beecroft, Jordan McDonough, Sam Waddle, Xavier Simmons, Brogan, Pickett Norris, Peter Honeybell, Ben McSweeney, Alan Bishop, Cameron Tanner, and David Sanford. Those were our cars we see the 67 on the top step of the podium with the fireworks going off and well, we're going to chat with our top three here in just a moment's time in fact we're going to uh, do that we're going to do that and we're going to bring up our third place finisher here this evening, the driver of the 32, Callan Arthur. Callan, congratulations on the third place here this evening. You got a bit lucky there uh, with a couple of guys at the front coming together, but still, a third place is a good result for you and your team. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Uh, definitely got lucky there. I've actually been um, struggling with the with my wheel all night. It's um, way out of whack, so just lucky to hang on there. What was it like to, to run the top of the racetrack? Where were you comfortable? And we know this cushion... Um, is fairly brutal at, at some stages of the race or, or any time you're, you're able to, to get that cushion. I mean, where were you comfortable? Uh, what was your car doing that it shouldn't be doing? Uh, yeah, I was pretty comfortable running on the top there, but um, yeah, just with my wheel playing up, I was like half a turn to the left going down the straight, so it made it a bit difficult, and yeah, I was just trying to hang on there. Well, you hung on to a third-place finish here, so congratulations on the third, but uh, you got any people you want to give a, a shout-out to? 
yeah, I'd just like to thank um, Team Mercury, uh, Dirt Division, and Super S Series Spares. Alright, Kellen Arthur coming home in third place. Coming home in second place here tonight, Chicken Legs Mini Mac, Matt McCutcheon. Matt, well done on second here tonight. You had a chance at the race lead, but uh, it was contact in turns one and two, and they pretty much uh, ended the race. Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. Um, that track was pretty ruthless. Had a pretty bad spa start being uh, spun at the start. Had to like come back from seventh, but the cushion was ruthless, but it was fast. So I uh, managed to pick up a few points and slide in the second. And yeah, sadly we made contact. Uh, had a lot of speed and he slid up. And I mean, it was just a racing incident. Yeah, there was nothing you could sort of do there. You, you kind of got the back of Brayton and then, um, you know, Jordan was, you know, just carried a lot of speed going into the corner as did Brayton and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, that happen. But uh, heat races uh, seem to have to struggle a little bit there. But, I mean, you, you know, you just try to put some sliders on and, and try and gather as you know, many spots as you could in the heat races. Uh, you couldn't get it done in the pole shuffle, but, you know, overall, uh, not a bad night. Yeah, no, it wasn't a bad night. You know, having to start from the back in the heats definitely uh, didn't help us. But, um, I mean, it was a cool night in the end. It was a fun and a racy night. Now, off topic, do you know what... Uh, do you know, for the New Zealand side, do you know what you're running first, whether it's uh, the wing sprint cars or the wingless or the midgets? What's what's um, up first, you know? So w wingless is tomorrow, and then 14 sprint cars, and then midgets. So um, I, I'm not doing the 14, sadly, but I'm doing the wingless and the midgets, so it should be a bit of fun. So you're a bit scared to run on three. Is that what you're telling me? You're too scared to put a wing on top? Oh, yeah, too, too well, fast, mate. Yep. You know too what? fast. Hey, if you like, you should have put a wing on it. <laughs> oh, that dad joke we better end <laughs> yeah dad joke 20 uh, what are we in 2018 yeah 2018 no, I love it um, carrying a bit of momentum into tomorrow night obviously these are a lot different um, to the to the wing uh, to the 14 wingers but is there anything you can take from a midget and transition it over into a into a wingless car obviously you know obviously the main difference has been been the horsepower um, and stuff like that, but is there anything you can take from midget? Uh, yeah, there is definitely. Um, with the midget, you got to try, try um, quite straight to be fast because they haven't got a lot of power compared to those wing cars and wingless. So I think it'll help us out driving um, the wingless in straight because that's the fastest way around. So I think that'll also help. All right, well, look, uh, no doubt we'll see you tomorrow night with the wings, but before we let you get out of here, uh, why don't you thank some people that make it all happen for you? Yeah, we'd love to thank uh, Speed Nation and uh, NZSR, um, all the guys from NZSR, uh, Brayden, Harry, and Peter, all those guys, and uh, yeah, and thank you, Ultimate Dirt TV, for living, for live streaming. All right, there we go, Matt McCutcheon coming home in second here, and coming home with the win. We spoke to him after the pole shuffle, but he brings the 67 home in first place. Brayden, congratulations on the win. Yet you didn't have it all easy. Uh, you had challenges from Jordan and also Matt McCutcheon late in the race, but, uh, well, things just fell into your lap here tonight. Yeah, thanks, Brett. That was an awesome race. I haven't had a good race like that on um, on a league race in a while, especially in the midget. I've always sort of struggled with the midget, so it feels good to come back with this. And, you know, racing with guys like Jordan and Matt, who are usually really fast in these things, is it's really cool and it um, boosts your confidence quite a lot. So I really enjoyed it, and the track was awesome, and it provides some good racing with those green side laps there. How do you obviously you do this in real life? I mean, what do you take from from real life and put it into the sim? Is there is there are they first of all are they close to what they are in real life? Um, it's it's hard because well, I'd say the way they the the way they handle probably not so much, but the way they race is you can you can take a lot for like racecraft and and stuff like that. Like the way you race people, it's quite similar, and you can usually take. Um, real life situations into the into the sim, you know, into eye racing. So, a lot of the situations that happen to you while you're racing actually happen in real life. But it's really cool to like bring that all the like a couple of those skills over into the into the game, and vice versa from here to the real life. Yeah, talk about those last sort of six laps there. You had a you had a battle with Jordan uh, and also Matt as well. I mean, um, yeah, Matt put a slider on you. You come back underneath him, and then you know you return the you return the favor going into one and two and. Uh, he got into your crash bar. I mean, you know, what's it like racing against those guys, knowing that you, you know, the respect is there, and, and you're able to throw those sliders on. Yeah, it's awesome. It always helps when you respect them, and and you know they're gonna race you clean. You know, 
and um, it just makes you more comfortable racing with them and you, and you don't get too nervous about um, how they might react to the, to the slide job or something or to the movie pull. So it's, it's always a good good fun versing them and going up against them and racing against them. It's, it's always really fun and really enjoy doing it. All right, Brayton, we'll look uh, well done on the win. Uh, why don't you thank some people before we let you get out of here? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank um, New Zealand Swim Racing and uh, Speed Nation, Hazard Media, all the boys at NZSR uh, and youth, uh, youth for Swimming at Brett. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. All right, there we have it. Brayton Davison comes home with the win here this evening for the ninth round. The first time we see him in the series and the first time he gets the checkered flag. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all from Ultimate Turn TV. Once again, make sure you check out The Dirt New Zealand on Facebook. Make sure you check out WP Concreting on Facebook as well. Check out Colby's Eye Place, a sponsor of Ultimate Dirt TV. Check out City Group Holdings. Go to City Group. Go to SETI.com. It's C E D I. Check those guys out on the web as well. On behalf of everyone here at Ultimate Dirt TV, it's good night. We'll see you next week for the 10th round but as far as live streaming goes for ultimate dirt tv well we still got a couple of live streams to come throughout the week obviously tomorrow night with the new zealand title the wingless are up first the 410 wingless no idea what track they're at but uh no doubt they will put on a show so make sure you like ultimate dirt tv on facebook make sure you check us out on you at youtube as well you go to youtube.com forward slash ultimate dirt tv on behalf of Ultimate Dirt TV, my name is Brett Wheeler, signing off, saying goodnight. We'll see you tomorrow night.